Look at these two images. Which one looks more realistic? For me, it is the one on the right. Take a moment to think about why that is. There is something about that shadow in the corners. You see, light usually bounces multiple objects until it reaches your eyes, and in places where there is a lot of geometry like a corner, the rays will simply hit the walls more often than your eyes. The problem is that calculating this shadow is something quite difficult. Advances in modern game graphics can give some good results, but there is a technique that, in spite of being just an approximation, is very cheap and gives very nice results. It is called screen space ambient occlusion. Ambient refers to the indirect light that we talked about, and screen space refers to the fact that you only use the information visible on the screen to calculate it. The technique was first introduced in the game Crisis, released in 2007. In this video, I'll talk about a newer version of screen space ambient occlusion that is called horizon based ambient occlusion. It is very similar, but unlike the former one, I haven't found many videos of people talking about it so I think it deserves a video. The algorithm starts with the geometry information available on the screen. For each pixel we try to determine its shading value. After that is done, the result will look something like this, so we apply a blur to it to finally get this. Let's see how we determine though the shadowing value for each pixel. This graph represents the geometry of the screen near a pixel. You can imagine it as a small row of pixels and remember that we have some geometry information for each pixel. If we now look at this point, we can see that it is in a valley. That means that it is occluded by some geometry and we should apply a shadow to it. How do we determine that? Well, first we take the normal of that point and if you don't know what that means, it is just the direction that the surface is facing. Next, we rotate it 90 degrees to find this tangent also called slope. We need one more vector now, and it is a vector from our point to the highest point in our graph. We can find it by checking every pixel in this small proximity. Now we have these two vectors. Let's see what happens if we smooth on the surface. You can see that they start pointing in the same direction, meaning less shadow. The formula to get the occlusion value is as follows. Find the angle of these two vectors and the OX vector. Calculate the sinus of each angle and subtract them. This was the calculation of one ray, but we will do this in four directions in our 3D environment and average the result. There are many tricks that people apply here, like rotating the direction for every pixel to get some better results. I have skipped some implementation details, but you can take a look at the presentation in the description if you want to see all the details. I tried to implement this myself in my 3D engine without looking at external code sources, so my implementation is not very good and still needs some fixes, but I'll use some code snippets to give you an idea of how an implementation would look like. The first thing we do is we take a random vector, and uh, we then go in four directions based on this vector, so we go forward, backwards, and then we flip it 90 degrees and do the same thing, and after we compute all these four values, we average them. Calculating the first vector, that is the tangent, is not very difficult, we just need to use the cross product a few times and be careful with the ordering of the parameters. The second vector is a little more difficult to find. We need to march in the given direction and look for the highest pixel value. And in the end we can finally apply the formula. Anyway, I'll make a video about my 3D engine soon, so if you are interested in that, consider subscribing. Until then, if you watched this far, you would probably also enjoy my video about how ChatGPT made me a gaming entity, so check that out. See you!